Um, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to draw. My father was an artist, um, pretty much inspired me to get into it. So I've been doing it since I was about three years old. But then eventually I got into the industry by just pushing through. I worked a lot of bad jobs, doing like cell phone games, board games, working for like coupons instead of money. And eventually I got my big break when I uh, worked on a movie called Aliens in the Attic, which is not too crazy of a film, but it was my humble beginning. When I was a kid, um, I had a lot of disabilities growing up. Not like mentally challenged or anything, but uh, I had ADD, ADHD, um, I have a bit of Asperger's, and uh, growing up with these challenges, it was hard to relate with people. A lot of my teachers looked down on me. They thought that I was a dumb kid. They put me in the corner of class. I had some teachers call in my parents, bring them in, and say, your kid will be lucky if he flips burgers one day. And I had this going out and growing up and growing up and all throughout school. I couldn't ever seem to catch a break. I had friends. I had a lot of amazing friends. But there would always be those people that tried to take me down, that would try to tell me that I wasn't good enough to do what I wanted to do. And uh, I eventually pushed through. I became an artist. You know, um, My dad was my best friend and my worst enemy. He turned me into a monster. Every day I would show him art and he would be like, no, I think you can do better. Show him art, I think you can still do better. And then I would constantly be like, when am I gonna get your approval? When am I gonna be good enough to live up to your standards? And this lasted and lasted until eventually when I was about to graduate high school, he was like, I don't think you should take up art. You know, like, not that you should stop doing art, but I think you should go to school, go to college, get a job, you know, do this. And then art can, I don't want you to sell paintings on the side of the street one day. And I was like, that's not gonna be me. I'm like, I want to be you. I mean, my dad was a great artist. You know, no one would ever believe me, but I thought he was gonna be like the next Frank Frazetta. Like his paintings were amazing. He would do paintings taller than me of cave women and all this awesome stuff and he let it go. And I always felt like he was trying to make sure I didn't turn into what he was. But I was like, I want to prove it that I can do this. I made a book because I wanted to make something for me. I wanted to prove to my dad that I could not only do this, but prove to myself that I could make something that I can hold and say it's mine and only mine. I did that whole book on my own. So I made the book and towards, it took me a year and a half to make it and it was like 300 pages and by, the, let's say the 85% mark, I gave up. And I let that go for about a month. I didn't tell anyone that I was taking a break. I just pretended like I was still working on it. I would take walks every day, just feeling like I was a failure. And I called my dad, and when I called my dad, of all people, I told him, I'm gonna give up, I don't know what to do with this book. I think I wanna get a job at a studio. Um, and I told my dad that, and he was like, why? You've gotten this far, right? Why would you give up all of a sudden? And I was like, well, I don't know, and he's like, Look, the way that I look at it is that the less you're perfecting and working on your craft, the more someone else that wants it more is catching up with you. And eventually they're gonna figure out what you couldn't figure out and they're gonna take that project from you and do their own thing with it and they're gonna garnish the success while you're left forgotten. And at that point I woke up and I was like, I don't ever wanna be forgotten. Like I've worked too hard. I've, I've bled too much from this, from the moment I was a little kid being taunted by my teachers and kids in school to where I am today, I gotta finish this thing and I gotta make it happen. And if I wouldn't have followed that dream, or the, not that dream, that advice, I wouldn't be here today. There wouldn't be a life-size Gabriel out there. There wouldn't be a statue behind you. There wouldn't be toys among Star Wars toys that has a Gabriel face on it. I wouldn't have been able to live this dream that I have today. Honestly, it's stressful. I wake up every day stressed out. I get a lot of bad anxiety, I get headaches all the time, and I'm not blaming anyone for it but myself. My brain is just constantly pushing new stuff, whether it's business, whether it's art, whether it's do people like my stuff still. You know, like I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna try to act like everyone loves my art. I constantly degrade myself in my head. I'm always trying to get better and I'm trying to find what that new outlook is that I could do that. When I did the Kill Book, LMS, I wanted to create something different. I wanted to build something for myself. And I feel like you got what you see. You know, that all came from my heart. But now I have this stupid mindset where I always feel like I have to impress or build something so it can make money instead of building something because I want to be happy with it. I mean, even now and then, like I have this insecurity of mine that I always joke around with my girlfriend that if a certain picture doesn't do well, I kind of feel like I failed. I feel like I didn't live up to that hype that I was supposed to. 
So, but then every now and then I'm just like, is that my brain telling me that? Is it really that hard for that picture to be seen? Is it something with Facebook? Is it something with Twitter or Instagram that's just not working? And you know, like I try to think about those little things that have really been upsetting me and trying to get a control on that. But then also it's just, I talked to Anthony Jones about it once and he's just like, just put it out, just put it out. And if someone doesn't like this, they'll like the next one. And then eventually you'll start to build up that army. I think we're plateauing, honestly. You know, like I see a lot of the same old. Um, in the next five or so years, we're gonna have about 20 superhero movies coming out, which might be cool for some people, but I would rather see 20 new properties come out. I wanna change this industry. You know, like I wanna allow what I had with LMS, my project for other artists. I wanna build a platform where people can live their dreams and work on the properties that they wanna work on. I feel as, as artists that we do our best work when we're emotionally involved in it. LMS is my uh, property that I made. In 2008, I started it. It started off as just some art that I was having fun with and eventually spun into a 300 page book, which I can show right here. So here's the book. Um, you know, like I said, you know, like I had people that just pushed me on making something out of it. I didn't think it would be anything. I drew a few characters. And then eventually, yeah, I sat down. It's supposed to be 30 pages. Turned into what it is today. I'll give you the quick pitch. It's a story about Gabriel, a super soldier that's been created to win a war against an alien race known as the Nomans. And they're nicknamed that because no man has ever been able to defeat them. Gabriel goes, he wins the war in a single punch. Everyone flips out. They bring Gabriel back to planet Earth and they give him the title Protector of Tomorrow. And from there, Gabriel has to clean up America and turn it into a better place. As Gabriel starts to do this, the world falls in love with him. They start making movies, TV shows, toys, comic books, sex toys, food, everything you can imagine. Gabriel becomes the face of pop culture. But soon the line begins to blur between hero and celebrity and at Gabriel's weakest moment, he's set up by a Noman extremist group known as Pandemonium and sentenced to a crazy prison known as Level 9 Facility. For the next nine years, they break Gabriel down and they turn the Superman into a super nothing until eventually Gabriel's broken. But on the day of his execution, he gets an introduction by the elusive Agent O who offers Gabriel a chance at uh, redemption and revenge and gives Gabriel this, everything that's inside of here, and says, I have the mission waiting for you. I know who set you up. All you have to do is grow your balls back and get out of here. Gabriel breaks out of the prison, and now he's entered into a new world that's been taken over by corporations, conglomerates, reality stars, musicians, and worst of all, the terrorist team that set Gabriel up in the first place. So now it's up to Gabriel to stop all of these people and reclaim the world he once helped build. The only problem is, is that Gabriel's no longer as strong as he once was, and he now has to rely on the people he once had to protect. So that's the story of LMS. And what this book is, is it's his whole entire kill book. It's his Bible of all the people that he's either going after and he's gonna take down and kill and all that stuff. There's a lot of goodies in here. And a lot of art by crazy artists that worked in here. Oh, 60 amazing people. So that's why I tell everyone, I'm like, fight for whatever you have. A lot of people think it's bullshit and that it's all like, you know, cliche, you know, uh, quotes that we hear every day. But I'm like, no, it's true. You know, like I fought hard for it, I held on to it, and I didn't give up.